Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is Monday night. It is time for our weekly DJ live chat. And tonight, my special guest is the one and only Rick Brewer. Good evening, Rick. Hi, John. Thanks for having me on. I sure appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming on. We are going to be talking tonight, ladies and gentlemen, about sales and marketing. We're going to give you, in this next half hour, a ton of information. You're going to be taking some notes. Oh, hang on. It's my, my feeding through. There we go. My bad. If I don't shut the YouTube video off, it will pop up and do that exactly what it just did, Rick. You probably didn't hear that, but they did. <laughs> but we're going to be talking about sales and marketing with when it comes to your services and your business. Rick, this is the time of year that we're looking at our business and we're wanting those phones to ring. We've heard people talking about it's booking season and maybe they're not ringing. So let's just dig right into that. What can we do? Yeah, that's a million dollar question out there, John, is that what can we do to get our phones to ring more because these brides are out there and they're going to hire somebody. They might just as well hire us. So getting them to know about us is our first crucial step. Now, just because they know about us doesn't mean that they're going to automatically buy us. So we need to let them know about us in an effective manner. So we need to understand how to market to them. Number one, the medium that we can market on. <clears throat> And then number two, the message that we need to market them to them with. And so if we can gear down on our message first, what we're saying to them, what we say to them is what's going to matter the most. Because what we want to say doesn't really matter. What they're looking for, you know the difference between features and benefits. Features are what uh, are, are things that you have. And the benefits are what you are providing for them. For example, you can have the greatest Bose system out there and, and the latest, greatest in lighting and everything that you do can be the best equipment in the world. But that might not mean a hell of beans to a bride, For more sure. so than getting her family up on the dance floor and making sure that everybody has a good time and not embarrassing her. That's what she's looking for is the end result. So we have to, number one, start with a marketing message that's going to speak to her needs. And her needs are the only needs that matter. Yeah, especially in this day and age where it's all really it's becoming all about me world. You know, what is it in for me? What what can you do for me before I'll even give you the time of day to some extent? Right. The millennial bride, the, this, this millennial customer that we're dealing with is coming out of school expecting to land a hundred twenty thousand dollar a year job. <laughs> and so they have a little bit on the high expectation scale that we need to. Uh, at least let them know that what we do, we can meet or exceed their expectations. Yeah, and that that's a huge thing, I think, to understand that the, the expectations are going to be huge because they're expecting, and yet it's our job to really try to meet those. And that, that's that's a difficult kind of balancing act. <laughs> I know I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> right. Well, in, this is the day of her life. I mean, it's like girls start planning their weddings when they're, you know— that tall and and, mm -hmm. and uh, you have all boys correct John yeah I've got one little girl yes okay so you got one little girl on the way that's going to be starting to play wedding with her with her older brothers <laughs> and so <laughs> uh, my my girls started playing when they were respectively five and two uh, let's get married and they mm -hmm. usually played with their little brother and he was a good sport about it um, but the thing is is they start dreaming about their weddings when they're that old but they don't really start looking into the nuance and in, in the, the specifics of their wedding until they get engaged and get a ring on their finger. That's when it gets real. And that's when they've got a real wedding to start planning on their hands. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And that's something I'm not looking forward to, but that's another, another video in another day. You've got time. <laughs> for sure. For sure. So, so we've got to have our message. What next? Right. Once you have your message, then we need to find the medium that's going to be appropriate for us. Now, I'm not a big, let's just throw a lot of money out there. You can buy instant legitimacy in any advertising, uh, in any business. I mean, think about it. If you're, if you're a plumber and you move to a new town and you spend $50,000 a month on advertising, you'd probably be pretty well known and pretty busy pretty quick just because of the legitimacy that it buys. Now, if you don't maintain and sustain your reputation, then you're going to start suffering after that. In the wedding world, unfortunately, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of knuckleheads out there that can go out there and do a lousy job because it's one and done. In fact, if you uh, 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 could not get a refund from Amazon, if you could not get a guaranteed from things that you bought online didn't know about, you'd be a lot more skeptical about your purchase. 
that's the skepticism that we need to overcome with them by building trust because they don't know what they're doing yet they've heard all the bad stories so uh, after we get our marketing message together then we need to put the marketing message out to the world to see and that's through the different mediums whether it be at bridal shows whether it be uh, over 50 percent of what you do i recommend that you work on the internet first because that's the first place the bride goes it used to be the first place that she'd go is she'd start picking up the magazines and she'd start looking through all the brochures that she could pick up and what have you but nowadays first place she's going to the internet so put 50 percent of your efforts and 50 percent of your budget online now let's let's just kind of take a little bit of side tangent putting that online and the budget online what are a couple of places that people can do some advertising online with a level of success well, and, and that's a great question, and I can't answer that specifically for different markets, but I will say in a very general sense, Wedding Wire is the leading source for brides across the country. Now, I don't get paid by them. I'm not a, a, an official Wedding Wire educator. They, they run my articles from time to time. Uh, I just know this from all the people that I've worked with. When I ask people what's working, what's not, people are telling me that they are getting leads from Wedding Wire. Um, <clears throat> One little test that I will uh, I'll share with your audience uh, that uh, those who are here do this get however many points of advertising you have. Let's say that you go to you've got seven different things that you marketed. You market in a bridal show. You market in a magazine. You have your website. You market on Wedding Wire. You have a couple other places that you market. Get objects that reference all those places so you know which is which. Even if you have to write it on sticky notes and then put it out on your desk. Now, the first step I want you to do is I want you to take away the one thing that you know isn't working, that you're spending money on or spending effort on. Either it, your, your time and your money are two things that you need to watch. If you're spending time on it or spending money on it, you're spending. And I yep. want you to, if it's not working for you, let's get rid of it. Let's put it someplace else. I don't care if you like it or not. Like, for example, there's a lot of people that will spend their whole life on Facebook. There's even people that do a lot of Twitter. Brides yes. don't turn to Twitter for booking their wedding vendors <laughs> out of it. So, but get all these things represented and then take, first off, take the thing that away that, you know, isn't working and, and, and set that aside. Now I want you to pick the two things that, you know, you can't live without. In other words, you've got, uh, you know, that you're never going to give up wedding wire and you know, you're never going to give up this bridal show. You can't live without them. Put those aside, and then we're going to talk about those later. And then you take the other few that are left and figure out, do you really need them, or are you just kind of in a, in a security zone with them? And then really just think it through, what you're, what you're advertising with. Um, the other thing is I don't suggest that you get on chat boards and ask people what they're doing that works, because what, what might work in Des Moines, Iowa, might not work in Orlando, Florida, yeah. or vice versa. <clears throat> What they have in, in Las Vegas may be a totally separate thing than what they have in your city. So you have to understand what works. And the best way to do that is to ask fellow vendors in your that may not be in your category because you know that they're, they might not tell you the truth because they don't <laughs> they feel a little bit of uh, insecurity with you being there, too. For sure. So. For sure. Yeah, you definitely see that in the, in the industry and in, not just in the DJ world and photographers. It, it just exists across the board, I think. Right. And, and we get a little bit scarce, scarcity minded. And, and so find a photographer if you're a DJ. Find a cake person. Find somebody that you're friendly with. Start uh, forming the relationships that you should have built up and, and get, them, uh, get them solidified so that you can uh, find out. Just take them out to lunch and just ask them, what, what are you doing for marketing? What's working the best for you? Yeah. Now, when somebody says, this is one, one caveat, when somebody says, well, word of mouth works best for me. That's great. I'm not going to argue with the idea that word of mouth is a good idea, but the problem with word of mouth advertising is how do we, how do we, we build it up for next year? Now I, I know how to build it up for next year if you follow a certain system, but most people are just uh, shooting from the hip on their word of mouth advertising. And even word of mouth is, is, I mean, really you are, are, if you're a single operator in a DJ world, you're so close. I mean, that can be something that can work well, but I mean, you're that close to two bad events, something happens beyond your control at an event and all of a sudden that stream of referrals can just really shrink quickly. So, I mean, having that as your, your exclusive, I think wouldn't be such a great idea. Right. And word of mouth does come from two sources. It comes from brides and it comes from your past clients. And it also comes from uh, other people in the industry who know of you and want to work with you. 
So, I mean, it's like, you've got to separate it into those two areas. One time I, I used to have a photographer that would refer me out almost exclusively because I did everything. This was back in the days of film that they, uh, that they shot film instead of digital before this was pre-digital. And so they knew that I would set up the shot for them perfectly. Uh, and so when they came in and I set them up and I made them look like the hero, the pictures were a hero. Everybody was a hero. Everybody loved it. And they gave me 25% of my business. Sure. So, but if 25% of your business goes bye-bye, that's, you know, so that's really difficult. Um, we're going to take pause here just for a second, Rick. Now, for those of you who are out there, oh, I need to switch back to this view. Um, if you guys have got questions, we've already got a couple of questions that have popped up. But if you are watching this on DJNTV.com, you can click on the little YouTube <clears throat> insignia on the video player, and that'll take you out to YouTube. There's a chat on the right, and you can ask questions. We've got a couple here already. Um, we're going to talk just a little bit more, and then we'll dig into some of those questions because we've got one on text messaging uh, as how that's working with with uh, brides and such. But we'll dig into that in just a little bit. So, again, questions out on YouTube chat, post those. We'll dig into those in just a little bit. So. So Rick, we've we we now we've, we're trying to get our our marketing areas figured out. We've taken our two best ones. We can't live without. We've taken the worst ones. Continue. Got rid of them, replaced them. Hopefully, I mean, if they're if they're, they're, they're you, whenever it never fails. Whenever I do this test, they know automatically which one's not working. And why waste your time? Why waste your money on something you know isn't working just because it, you know your your competition is there? Who cares? Let your comp let it not work for your competition. So if it's not working for you, it's not working for you. Now we can, we can revamp, we can take another visit at it and uh, see. Now, I, as I speak, I'm sure that there's people out there that are saying, well, you know, you mentioned wedding wear, wedding wear doesn't work for me. Again, there's several different nuances that go into a business for me to specifically say what's going to work for you and what's not. Uh, for example, there's some people like myself that are shot out of a cannon and I can do face to face all day long, every day and be happy about it. Uh, uh, and, Bridal shows are great for me because face-to-face, -face, it's a great match. I dig it. Um, but other people, maybe not so much. Maybe they're a little bit more shot, a little bit more reserved than I am. Uh, right. And other people are much more uh, tech savvy than me that they can make their website pop. They can make a zing. You know, listen, you can get anything you want in this world for money. So you can hire somebody to get that stuff done. But what I'm suggesting is find the mediums that work for you specifically with your personality that you know you're going to follow up on. But the other idea is, is if you're not going to be the guy that answers his phone until like a day or two later, <laughs> kind of wasting your money there too. Very much so. Very much so. I think that you made a really good point though, that the, the pick the areas in which you're going to follow up and which you're going to be on. And that goes with the social media world. We've had this discussion with uh, other folks. If you're not going to be active in that arena, you might as well not be there. And I think that goes with, with everything, advertising areas and, and what have you. Well, and, and, and candidly, John, I, I raise this question all the time. I mean, I, I am a big belly-to-belly uh, -belly kind of guy, uh, meaning that I like to do the face-to-face -face stuff, that you really get that interaction and you get that you get the, the, the sense of emotion, you get everything. You build trust a lot firmer and a lot faster. Um, so I'm, I'm very big on networking with other professionals because pretend for a minute that you've got three venues out there that are spending a ton, a ton, a boatload of money on, on marketing and advertising, trying to get the brides in there. And you just walk in there and help them out with what they're doing, help them with some planning, help do a workshop or something that do something for them that you can be their best friend. And then there's no reason why you, you, uh, wouldn't, uh, uh, get, uh, uh, some referrals from them. Mm -hmm. That takes time to build that relationship though. Now, if you, <clears throat> Again, if you're not going, there's people out there that will will promise me upside down all day long that they get all their brides off of Facebook. When yet, when I've worked with clients, they they can't point to Facebook as being a source of revenue that has uh, that has brought in anything. Right. Um, so again, just be honest with yourself. Measure what you're doing. Uh, because it's it's about your business. It's about making money for you and your family, and that's what matters most. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Rick, before we continue on, let's get a couple of the questions. Uh, let's get a couple of those knocked out here, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, let's do that te the text messaging. Uh, with the newer generation, I've heard this and I've experienced this myself, that their method of communication is now texting in many ways more than email. That that I, I've got a couple of brides who are texting me information more than they will email me or call me or anything. Are you seeing that? And how does a person deal with that? Because it's it's kind of tough to handle, I think. 
Right. And I'm, I'm of the firm belief that most people don't like, uh, listen, text messaging works when it's an invited guest and not a bothersome pest. Uh, for example, <laughs> if you think about it, Redbox, anybody who belongs to Redbox or, or uses Redbox and you get their text messages, when they text me out a code for a 50 cents off or a dollar off a, a, a one night rental, and I was thinking about getting a, a movie anyhow that night, that works like a champ for me. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, um, in the wedding world, if you are, um, if you've already signed them up as a client, that's when the text messaging should, uh, be more effective for you because not, not as a prospective tool, uh, prospecting through text messaging. Uh, I don't, I, I'm not comfortable with that. And I don't suggest that to anybody. Do you think in today's, this day and age that, okay, once we've got them booked that I could actually not have the text messaging available for them because again the younger brides that's how they i mean my children my teenage upper teenage children that's all like how they communicate can a person basically say that's that's that type of communication is off limit and will that hurt you in the long run why well, i'm not understanding you're saying once you get them as a client say once you've no got them, texting exactly well once say you don't do texting or you don't want to have the information handled back and forth now i book them and now that's the the primary way that she wants to communicate is like oh i'll text you the list of songs i'll text you the da 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 da, da. is it something that it, that a person in this day and age can say you know i'd prefer not to have you texting or will that be offending people this younger the generation yeah, absolutely. You can say it. It's just the way you say it and how you say it to her that means it. For example, if it were me, I could I could get away with say, gosh, I'm not really that good of a texter. And I can text if I want to, but I just don't like to because of the fact that I'd rather talk to somebody. Sure. So um, that being said, if she wants to text you a song list, that's going to be, you know, 20 pages long. It's going to be ridiculous for you to try to translate that unless you can somehow forward your text to your email. Um, it, it, it's all individual. Go with the extra mile when you can. There's some, you, you hit it on the nail that some people, it, that's their preferred form of communication. That yeah. if I need to get a hold of somebody, I always write their phone, their cell phone number on their folder so that I can have that to text them or to call them uh, when I need to. If you, it, it, I mean, it's like there's, there's multiple ways, there's multiple, if that's her preference, I'd go with what she prefers. And try to make it work on your end if you sure. can. Sure. Okay. Our next question. Um, it was uh, talking about um, you've got a lead list, maybe from a bridal show or maybe from another vendor. Uh, is following up with those lead lists. What's the best way to do that? Is it with an email, with a phone call? How how do you, in essence, break the ice? One of my programs that I've written is called Turbocharge Your Leads, and it's specifically for lead lists. When you get a list of leads from a bridal show, from a, 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 an advertising source, um, when I used to own a, a wedding magazine, 95% uh, of the people who I had in that magazine did not use the leads that came along with the magazine. And of those who did use them, uh, I would say 80% of them didn't use them effectively or well. Uh, nowadays, it would probably be an even worse ratio because the first thing that people want to do is cut and copy the emails off of that list and then just email blast the, the, the tar out of these poor brides, right. um, who, by the way, have mostly set up secondary identities just for their weddings. <laughs> so uh, email is the last thing I would suggest you do. The first thing I suggest you do is get on the phone with them. Uh, second thing I would suggest you do is send a postcard that has an offer. Uh, that is tied to nothing. In other words, if you put an offer in there, John, pretend, play with me for a minute. Yep. If you met, if you met face to face with ten brides, ten appointments, how many of them would book with you? Generally, I get about sixty uh, percent. Sixty percent. So six of them would book with you. That's a, that's a good ratio. Let's say that you're having a bad week and you only got five. Would that still be all right? Yeah, it'd be fine with me. Okay. Now, average price that a bride spends on a DJ. I'm just going to throw a number out there, whether it's yours or somebody else's. <laughs> We'll say fifteen hundred dollars. Yep. So five times fifteen hundred dollars, seventy five hundred dollars. Would it be worth a two hundred dollar investment to get that seventy five hundred dollars? Oh, of course. Usually every day of the week, that's a good business decision. Now, Typically. based on the bride calling you up to ask to to introduce the relationship to start it going, what's the first question she asks you? She's always asking about price. Right. She wants to know if you're available and how much you charge. Yep. Okay. So based on that, that's what's important to her. So if we were to offer her a $20 gas card just for meeting with us, or you may make it a 15, I don't care, $10 Starbucks card just for meeting with us to see if we're a good match. Do you think you might be able to pull in 
10 appointments that cost you $200 and get five of them to book that will make you 7,500. Exactly. Yeah. So that if you used a number one, you used a phone call. Number two, you used a postcard and then way down the road, you're, you're welcome to use the emails just to make yourself feel better because everybody's telling you to use emails and do that. Yeah, exactly. Although I, I agree. I think the email would be down the list. That personal touch, I think, is something that's going to really set you apart because, as you said, everyone's hitting that email list. Right. And, and for that matter, a lot of people don't want to get on the phone. You can hire somebody to do uh, your phone calls for you, pay them uh, eight, ten bucks an hour, and you'll find people to do it all day long. Okay, let me see. I'm trying to see. I think, okay, a couple of the questions I think were just being asked in there, asked in the room. Uh, I want to see if there's one more here, and then we'll we'll be we got about ten, about eight minutes left here. Um, yeah, talking about uh, DJs going and scoping out bridal shows. Okay, so let's let's kind of kind of uh, wind thing bring things together here a little bit, uh, Rick. We've talked about you know doing some marketing or a message, and 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 you know evaluating marketing. How do we how do we proceed from there? You got to measure everything that you do, John. If you don't measure it, then and then you're throwing good money after bad. I guarantee it. So you get good at measuring what's doing. Now, here's here's the 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 number one uh, um, most used method of measuring. How do you hear about us? Now, the problem with it is, is you've got an overwhelmed bride who hasn't done it before, spending more money. She's apprehensive. She's not paying attention to how she heard about you. It's not her job. It's your job to make that work. So you've got to make it effective to where you can teach her how to ask or know where you, she found out about you. And there's also, there's other little techniques that you can do, but when you measure things effectively, you've got to measure three things. This is, you can measure a couple hundred things in your business, but at least three things effectively for your marketing. Number one, what makes your phone ring? Number two, are you, how many of those phone calls are you able to convert to face-to-face -face appointment? And then number three, how many contracts you get out of those appointments? Yeah. If you measure those things and you can pretty much zone in on where you're having the weak points. For sure, I think that's that's a great, a great analogy or a great great kind of little setup there because those three numbers, while related to each other, aren't a a you know ten, ten, eight, and 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 seven type of a thing. I mean, it can be a lot of variation on that as you're in essence filling your funnel. Sure, that's good, good stuff. Uh, Okay, I was just checking. Yeah, the if... question about uh, somebody scoping out bridal shows. You yeah. talk about the yep, so guys yeah, that, that aren't in the show scoping them out. Scoping them out. Yep, and looking at. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, from not evaluating a bridal show. How do I evaluate a bridal show? We just talked about a little bit about evaluating our marketing. You know, by you know the criteria of, of does it make my phone ring? Can I do I make you know get the meeting and then do I make a sale? Bridal shows. How would we evaluate those? You know, you've got different types of bridal shows. And the number one thing I tell people is more so than what the bridal show does for you, it's what you do at the bridal show. If you work that show and you work every lead, let's pretend that 50 girls come through there. And out of those 50 girls, only half of them needed weddings, what you sell, the wedding DJs. Um, uh, then that's 25 prospective clients that you had in front of you over a period of four or five hours, which would be hard to find any place else. So even by the numbers, uh, the smaller shows work. And I, the, the, the bigger shows, I had a client who did a, a show up in New Jersey the, up at the Meadowlands, mm -hmm. uh, 3,000 brides over two days. And it's like, it's a humongo show and you just got to know how to work it. So uh, how do you find a good show? The, that's a great question because again, in every market, it's a different, if it's, it's a different answer. Uh, but I'm, I will say this as a former bridal show producer that my first shows that I did were never as good as the fifth shows that I did. So um, the first shows that you do that if somebody's coming along with a brand new show, they haven't done it. They don't have a track record. They're not going to be as good as the fifth show that somebody's or the show that somebody's been doing for 15 years and they've got four other shows shows and they know how to market. The key to the, this is, is understanding each other's roles. The role of the bridal show producer is to do what? To bring people in the door. Yeah, get the brides there, do the logistics, do yeah. the registration, pipe and drape, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, your job is to talk to those brides that come through in an efficient planning manner that makes sense for them. Um, and the, I use what I call the 333 method, which is uh, you've got three seconds to capture their attention wherein you can ask them three questions. Uh, you can ask for three minutes of their time. And then during that three minutes, you can ask them three questions. So it looks like this. Hi, have you hired your DJ yet? 
or hi, are you considering hiring a wedding DJ? Uh, two, if it's yes, then uh, two, great, you got three minutes. Then question number one, have you ever done this before? And I'm giving you the variation of the question. Right. Have you ever done this before? Have you ever hired a wedding DJ before? What you're trying to get them to say is no. Well, this is our first wedding. Okay, good. You're like most of the brides here. Question number two, what are you hoping for? Uh, in other words, what have you seen out there? Have you been to a wedding that you saw something? Have you seen somebody before or heard of something that you really liked? What are you hoping for? And then question number three, what are you trying to avoid? Uh, you know, you've heard about the nightmare story. You've heard about the guy that's cheesy DJ. Uh, you've heard about the, the guy that comes out in the chicken suit and makes it all about him and not about the bride and groom. And then after that, then you would say, great, sounds like we got a match here. Let's meet further and we'll get to know each other. Uh, um, uh, how's your schedule next week? Mm -hmm. Go for the appointment. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great a great idea to actually go for the or mention the appointment or or get them thinking about that appointment when you've found that match early because if you like oh well we'll call you next week and set something up even though you may end up doing that anyway I think striking while the iron is hot is so critical you, I think there you go <laughs> I think it, it really is a um, uh, next question and then and then we'll uh, we we've, we've got a couple of things there but. Um, you did a bridal show, and now the brides are contacting you, and they're, they're texting. Hey, we're back to the texting, and they're looking for package information, and they've texted you and want to get that information via text. How do you send that out if your information is not set up via text? Again, millennial bride who expects everyone to be communicating that way. How do you handle that? Great, great question. I would simply reply, oh, uh, is there any way I can uh, email you or get on the phone and ask you a couple questions so I can send you the right information instead of just sending you everything I have? The idea meaning is you want to make it sound like you have specific information for her, specific pricing for her, based on what she's looking for, not based on just some packages. The problem with packages is that everybody else is doing them, and that's why we start talking about packages. That's why the bride asks us about packages is uh, the less uh, the lesser um, uh, let me say, how do I say this? The hobbyist DJ, she calls up and they'll ask her the standard questions. Where's your wedding? How many people? Yeah. And all these things that don't really matter yet. And then she'll call up with you and she'll say, well, our wedding's at Oak Ridge. Uh, we're going to have 150 people. Cocktail hour starts at this. You know that she's already called five people when she starts off the phone call like that. So by simply telling her saying, Hey, great. Congratulations. Can you get on the phone for three minutes? Mm -hmm. everybody's got three minutes if she doesn't have three minutes or if she says i'm at work no worries or or you can even say hey, oh great can you get on the phone for three minutes i'll tell you a little bit more so that we can zone in on what you're looking for and give you the exact quote nice nice i like that i like that yeah. uh they, that giving the three minutes and uh and and moving that because you want to get the information that's particular to her Right. And if she gives you three minutes, try to stick to three minutes. It's up to her. But if she needs to get yeah. off the phone, don't try, don't lure her in. Don't, don't, don't uh, promise low and, and, or promise high and deliver low. So. Yeah. Good, good stuff, Rick. Uh, we got a few couple of minutes left. Let's talk about, uh, you're going to be doing a workshop at the upcoming mobile beat during I the am. same it, time. It's Tell, a work. Let's talk about that. Thank you. It's a workshop that's aside from the regular Mobile B seminar. So if you're going to Mobile B, even if you're not going to Mobile B, you should be going to Mobile B, number one. But come out to Mobile B. You can come to the seminar without having to pay for the ticket. But you should be going to Mobile Team. And this is, believe it or not, John, my fifth year going out to, to Mobile B to, to speak. Yeah. And uh, this is a seminar. It's going to be three hours of uh, we're going to be doing uh, marketing reviews. And we're going to be talking about marketing uh, in, in general. And then I'm going to also throw in a one-hour uh, consult. Uh, in my consults, I sell those uh, typically for about 150 bucks. They go, they 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 rack rate for 250, but I typically sell them for 150 bucks. So the price of the ticket at 69 bucks is a pretty decent deal, and uh, uh, so you'll get the three hours of instruction. We're going to be doing marketing reviews where people can bring their stuff out, and we'll market it. We'll review it right on site, so you can learn from your your peers. Or if you don't want to, we can do that aside in the separate session. But the key to it is, is that you're going to have a good idea of what's right and what's wrong. Best practices in the industry right now. Very cool. What's, what's, the, web, <coughs> what's the website Excuse if they me. want to get more information? If you go to my website, getmorebrides.com, there's a badge right on the front page. that You can click on that. Take, it will take you into the interior page. And then you'll find all the information about the schedule. Uh, it's Monday. Uh, the first thing on Monday, I think it's, uh, I want to say it's like March 14th. Yeah. It's going to be like, I think, uh, I can't remember if it's 10 to one or I think it's 10 to one. And so, uh, uh, yeah, you should be flying in there Sunday and how to get a good night's rest or 
get all the partying out of your system and then come to the so, and come come to mobile beat the next day ready to rock and roll ready to so, rock and roll i just yeah. rick i was just making notes and i put the link in the description area below gang so when we get you once you get to a point here you can click refresh and you can get the link to go out and check that all out yeah you make of, comment they love the three minute idea too oh great one other thing too to comment that is i've got a cd on there five ways to maximize your next conference that if you just go to the link of the mobile beat link you can download that free that cd for free you just gotta listen go through my spiel it's at the bottom of the page <laughs> so, <laughs> it's marketing <laughs> so but anyhow you get a free cd so even if you don't want to listen to me or anything else, i might give you some ideas on how to prepare for to get more out of the conference because i'm telling you that what they do at mobile beat they 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 give you more information than you can handle so if you walk away unfilled uh you can't point the finger at them yeah yeah that's for sure there's just a lot of great stuff uh before we before we wrap things up we've got a couple minutes yet uh, you had mentioned earlier that you had a publication and and um i don't remember which one we were talking about at that time because we were talking earlier about uh, about one where you had uh, bridal show secrets was one and we were talking about uh, turbocharge your turbocharge your leads. Yeah, okay. I've got I've actually got 20, 20 uh, audio uh, books that I've created specific to the wedding genre, not specific to DJs, but anybody can use them. And most of this stuff translates outside of the wedding industry. So you got turbocharge your 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 uh, your leads. You've got bridal show success secrets. Uh, uh, I've got one like one is overcoming the what's your price bride. The bride who calls up and says, what's your price? How to yep. overcome that? It, it's an hour long discussion about just that one question. Um, getting on the preferred vendors list. You can't, just, it's no state secret that going to these reception venues or bridal shops is a good idea, but it's just a matter of how do you do it to where you can do it properly and not get yourself banned from there for life. Yeah, <laughs> that's that. that can happen unfortunately i've heard i've heard the horror stories <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's happened to me <laughs> so, uh, that but. can that can if uh, if people can they purchase all that those those audio books and such can they purchase those out on a website also Oh, you bet. Yeah. And if, if they're looking for it, I've got a package deal for everything, my entire library for 129 right now. So um, if you can't find the deal, just email me. I'm not sure what the, the what the address is on that. Email me and I'll send you a link for it. Um, but the idea is I'm not selling them cheap because I'm, uh, I'm a cheap date. It's because I want you to try them out. And if it works for you on the, on that level, then hire me as a coach to come in there and personally coach your business. I've coached hundreds and hundreds of businesses. And that's where I really live. And that's where that's where I can really do some damage and really boost your numbers for next year is uh, by hiring me as a coach uh, to uh, go specifically with you and your business and uh, be able to run through things on a weekly basis and have weekly meetings to where uh, uh, we can really change things for you in the coming year. And, and I think that idea of, of having a coach in an area like that, because there's a number of things we do right, but just having someone there who will keep our head in the game and focused that alone, I think, is is valuable, so valuable. Well, that, right, and and John, let's face it, we're isolated in our businesses. It's not like we want to call up our our competition and say, "Hey, how you doing?" And we're going to be truthful with yeah, each other. Yeah, exactly. Because most of us are going to be, yeah, oh, hey, things are great. Business is looking up. Is it? You know, we don't. You know, if, if we want to be honest about it, I want you to be as honest as you would be with your spouse about your business. Uh, and then we can really, because uh, a lot of you are doing things absolutely perfectly right, and you are the absolute czars of your business. The problem with it is, is that if you had the influence, like I do, I mean, it's like I'm in a very unique position to where I get to talk to people every day, all day, about their businesses and find out what's working and what's not. For sure. And I found ways that found things that work. Yeah. specifically for specific people in specific situations. Yeah. Rick, what's the email that they can email you at? I'm going to put that in the description below also. Rick at getmorebrideswithans.com. Perfect. Perfect. So all the links, gang, are down in the description below. You can go down there and, uh, and, and check those out. If you have any questions, the email's down there. Rick is, is there. He's a resource for you. He can help you grow your business, improve your business. And geez, sixty nine dollars. That's a that's a, a cheap date on a Monday morning. Right. It's a it's a it's a get to know you date. You know, so get to know me and see if you like me. Hopefully, you'll, we uh, we can take some further steps. I'm not asking you to marry me on the first date. But <laughs> so, well, we just kept but, going with that analogy, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. There we go. By the way, um, 
There's some other great seminars. Mitch Taylor's given a seminar that you ought to look at. Ron Ruth is given an awesome seminar, the Audio Amazing Seminar. Uh, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, check them out too as well. Um, go to Mobile Beat though. If you, if you're not signed up for it, please let me put in one more last uh, last appeal to you to to consider it for you and your business because that's where the professionals go. And if you want if if your business is important to you, which I'm sure it is, you wouldn't be here just wasting your time just to to look at my mug. Maybe John's, but not mine. But uh, the idea is is that that's where the professionals go. Go out there learn from your peers, learn what you can to, to uh, really take your business to the next level. That is well said, Rick. I, I appreciate it. And, and they'll get to come and hang out with us. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> there we go. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Sushi. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> if we don't want to do that, that would be bad. I've heard, I've heard <laughs> Mitch, yeah, Mitch and his, his fish 